How do we turn sound into meaning? This is a topic that is very, very dear to my heart and we're going to take a deep dive into how we actually communicate and speak eloquently through our instrument. We're going to look at the shared components of language and music. So just as in spoken language, on the flute, in our music, we have vowels and consonants. So in our spoken word, we have some very crisp consonants, k, 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 or t. We have slightly softer ones like d, g. Uh, so even in language, there is this variety of ways to articulate. Same on the flute. You want to have a whole different array of articulations. Um, and and that's, that's very helpful for your expression. So I want you to think of articulation in an expressive way. So for example, you might start Mozart concerto with quite a crisp consonant. But instead you might start the foray fantasy with a much gentler consonant. There I'm using very gentle articulation, almost none at all, almost like a slur. So uh, it's a very, very expressive tool to think about uh, the kind of consonants we want to use. So just as in language, uh, when you have these differences, like if you were to say the word grazie, uh, that's quite, quite sprightly, quite a lot of energy in that. Or if we would say birthday, the B and the D, softer consonants. Um, or love you, the L and the Y, very gentle consonants there. So uh, think about that and think about how you release the energy in the breath. When you say something like grazie, it's quite fast air. Same on the flute. So your articulation is a very expressive tool and that helps you speak through your instrument. And you're, remember, remember you're an artist of the breath. So the air speed and the way we release the air is also going to have a huge effect. So I don't want to be too uh, energetic, for example. You know, with my Mozart like that. So I'm going to use a gentler articulation and just a gentler release of the breath. So just consider how you would want to speak a phrase, first of all, before you play it. And then we come to the vowel sounds, which are a very, very beautiful, wonderful part of flute playing, as they are in singing. One of the most wonderful things to, to explore on the flute is the use of vowel sounds. So I want you to think like a great singer. So the singers get the maximum expressive uh, range from the way they use the vowel sounds. If you listen to somebody like Dietrich Fischer Dieskau, uh, some of the great, greatest singers out there, um, they will go so deeply into the vowel sounds to get the tone of voice. So relating back to my story about the singer, if there's somebody singing in the room next door to you, just the, the quality and the, the, the way they're relating to what they're singing about through the tone of voice, through their beautiful articulation, their diction, uh, through their vowel sounds, we should be able to understand the expression. So what do I mean by that? For example, the vowel sound ah is a beautiful, open-hearted, open singing sound, happy, friendly singing sound. If we ask ourselves, where does that resonate in the body? It's in the chest, open-hearted, it's the open-heartedness. The mouth cavity is open, the face is open. So it has this beautiful, friendly, open quality. So relating back to my earlier class, using the body as the instrument, this is like body as instrument 2.0. So this is again asking ourselves, where does the sound resonate? 
So that's another reason why I want to take care of my head, neck, back relationship so that it's, I can use these vowel sounds to the greatest um, extent so that I'm not hiding this expression through poor use of, of poor organization of the body. So you can be as expressive as you're able to be. So that's the vowel sound ah. And then the vowel sound I is quite similar. Although um, an I is a diphthong, so I, I. But if you, in general, just in general, think about um, when we say I, there's a certain vertical quality to that. We slightly lift the palate inside the mouth when we say the letter I. And so what is happening there, technically speaking, in terms of resonance, is we're connecting chest resonance with head resonance. Singers talk about head resonance, chest resonance, all the time. This is their territory, and it's absolutely ridiculous as flute players if we don't learn from this. So we need to, uh, I, I find it incredibly inspiring to, to play with these uh, concepts from singing. So by maintaining a flute embouchure, internally create the vowel sound inside the mouth, gently, not forcing anything, inside the chest. So I'll show you the I vowel sign. So here is, I'll maybe give you two different versions. Here's A to begin with. And I'm going to just lift the palate a little bit, the, the roof of the mouth. So I get a little bit more head resonance coming into that. You can maybe hear a little bit of a difference there. I find the I vowel sound is a very noble sound. Um, ah is open-hearted, friendly, full of love. I is noble, uh, has this kind of burnished quality to it. Uh, the E vowel sound, you have to be a little bit careful with that uh, because it can sometimes sound a bit edgy, a little bit harsh. But, you know, we don't always want to be beautiful. So when you're playing something like your Carmen fantasy, you know, and it's so characterful and it's about life and death, you need a little bit of that E in the sounds. So, for example, inside the mouth, back of the mouth, uh, you form that E vowel sound a little bit um, or as much as you can while still playing the flute. So. It's, I call it the turning the knife sound, when you want to get, a, you, you actually invite a little bit more of that edge to come in. Um, uh, William Bennett would say it's like, you know, when you're, when you're mixing paint and you put a little bit of black paint into, into the mixture. It's a wonderfully dramatic quality to have. Um, and then the oo sound, um, the oo vowel sound, is a beautifully vulnerable one. Uh, so it's haunting, often very haunting, kind of hollow, a little bit, uh, French word for it would be détambré. So you take all that rich color out and you're left with something pretty fragile. Um, so let me see if I can show you. I'm doing as much of that shape as I possibly can while still playing the flute, sort of like a hooting owl. And that one is wonderful when you need something to sound very, very vulnerable, fragile, uh, haunting. It's excellent. Um, things like in Shostakovich V and Shostakovich Fifth Symphony. So it can be quite terrifying and quite haunting. Um, it's, a, it's one that I love to use. Maybe another example from Shostakovich V.
I, I don't want that to sound friendly and confident and assured. Uh, so if I were to do that with a vowel sound ah, it would sound completely different. It, everything's in the daylight. It's not so mysterious. So these are wonderful, wonderful things that you can play with.